Dr. Paul Sutter. I am a research professor at Stony Brook University's Institute for Advanced Computational Science. I'm also a guest researcher at the Flatiron Institute in New York City. I'm an astrophysicist. I'm an author. I'm a TV host. I just, I just love thinking about and talking about science. Perfect. And we are very much looking forward to, to hearing more from you on that in, in April um, when you will be on Retail Connected's program. I think it's fascinating to kind of hear from you on these kind of, you know, you're going to be speaking about humans in space and kind of human yeah. colonization and Mars and, and what that looks like. And I think it's really fascinating to ponder these questions, um, you know, in the context of retail, for example, how mm -hmm. are these advances in kind of technology going to influence kind of the technologies and kind of how we live and work in the future? I think it's just a really fascinating thing to, to think about. So we're really looking forward to hearing from you then uh, on that. So on that note, though, this isn't what our chat today is going to be about. Today <laughs> is very much, we don't want to give anything away uh, about what you're going to be talking about in April. <laughs> So we uh, are going to yeah, use this time uh, just to kind of find a little bit more out about you, kind of who you are, um, and so our viewers can kind of get a sense of, of, of who you are as well and the kind of things you like, the things that bring you joy, what drives you, um, and yeah, what your life is like a little bit more. Absolutely. So let's, uh, we're obviously at the start of the new year, uh, which is mm -hmm. often a time for kind of reflection uh, on, on, on the past year. What um, was the best thing that happened to you in 2020? I think the best thing that happened to me in 2020 is that uh, I was able to stay safe, uh, both myself, uh, my family, uh, my relatives. We're all able to, so far, uh, avoid coronavirus and the worst effects of it. I know it's such a, a ravaging disease, a horrible disease, uh, but we were able to stay safe uh, and stay together and stay loving and stay connected in so many different ways. I have uh, family all around the country and that I really do miss seeing in person but uh, we were able to stay connected. We were able to virtually exchange Christmas presents. It was, uh, we made the most of it and we were able to stay, stay safe. And that's just, that, that was the best thing. That was yeah. the best thing that happened to me in 2020. Yeah, uh, well, thank goodness for the technology as well that allows us to Absolutely. be able to do that. So yeah, Zoom, for example, how we're having a chat now. Um, it's, yeah, I think I'm also very grateful for, for that as well. Um, and just, Coming to your career for a moment, um, mm -hmm. stepping across to, to think about that, what is it, what aspects of your career kind of bring you the most joy? <laughs> yeah, it's it's that connection. It's it's reaching out to people. It's communicating something that I love, that I'm just absolutely passionate about and fired up about. And in seeing that spark, seeing that passion rise up in someone else, uh, and just getting them interested, getting them curious, answering some of their burning questions, and being able to share that connection, share that love for learning and curiosity in the universe, uh, making those personal connections with people giving them an opportunity to explore is just that's why I do it that's what gets me up every single morning yeah and that passion and, and joy certainly comes across in uh, in your podcast uh, ask us basement as well where you kind of um yeah debunk lots of the biggest kind of questions that people have mm -hmm. around astro astronomy and, and and physics so yeah that's that's Absolutely. brilliant yep. and so you're based in New York close to mm -hmm. New York City um I know that you spend a lot of time there um Let's kind of, I guess, have a bit of a hypothetical uh, scenario um, where you have a free day, um, you are given the task of kind of filling it with um, activities um, in New York that kind of bring you the most amount of joy. Um, you know, what would, how would you spend that day in, in New York City? Oh, that is such a fun question because my my favorite kind of day in New York is the day where I am just super busy, where I am bouncing all around the city, going to uh, meeting someone for breakfast right off the train, uh, getting having a meeting in the morning, and then uh, catching lunch with a friend in Soho, and then going to my partner's dance studio, <clears throat> excuse me, to catch a rehearsal, uh, and then having an afternoon. Uh, meeting in my office in Midtown and then uh, hanging around, go, maybe going to the seaport to just enjoy the sights. And then, and then meeting someone for dinner at somewhere swanky that I've never been to before uh, because there's a million and one restaurants in New York yeah. uh, and then catching the train home and, and going back to my family at the end of the day, like that, a day where I'm just 
bouncing around like crazy, uh, going from meeting to meeting is just my favorite kind of day in New York. What, um, so you mentioned restaurants. Do you have any mm-hmm. kind of particular favorite kind of spots that you, that you dine at um, or any particular bars as well? Any, any kind of, yeah, favorite spots that you would recommend? I have I have a few favorites, uh, but I do I do love exploring new places. So I try not to go to the same place too many times. But I do love a, a lovely, lovely uh, Greek place uh, near my office. It's called Marikaya. It is amazing. They have fireplace is very co- cozy, both for lunch and dinner. Yeah. Um, and no, I'm not sponsored by them. I just absolutely <laughs> love them. Uh, and I love just going down to to Soho, to the Lower East Side, and just popping into a random place, a random hole in the wall with uh, a friend of mine who lives there or a group of friends and just just seeing what's new. I love yeah. going to Little Italy. I go love going to Little China, Little Korea, uh, just, you know, all the, the neighborhoods and, and just exploring. Yeah. Well, that sounds incredible. And I think the next time I'm in New York City, I'm going to, to, to go there and, uh, and try that out. It sounds awesome. There's so many amazing food options oh, in New yeah. York. Yeah. You're very lucky. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> and if you, if your young, if you, if your younger self could mm-hmm. give your current self a piece of advice, what would that be? I think it would be just, just to keep pushing. There's so many times I look back in my career where I got discouraged, uh, where I felt like I, I couldn't make progress or I couldn't make headway, uh, where I, I, I couldn't finish that research line or I, I couldn't pursue that opportunity. It's just, just whatever and all the interesting twists and turns that my career has taken. I would, I would recommend to just keep pushing mm-hmm. and, and just don't give up because the journey itself is part of the fun. And not knowing what's going to come next month or next year or next decade is part of the fun. Yeah, that's a very good point. That actually makes me think of the new Pixar movie, Soul. Have you seen that? Mm, I just watched it. I just watched it last week. Yeah. It's, and and, yep. and the, the, that whole um, kind of piece around the journey is, you know, is, yes. is equally as important as the kind of goal as well. Just really came across now. It's a great film, isn't it? I loved it. It is. It is. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And the soundtrack as well was amazing. Oh, yeah. Um. So... Uh, thinking about your kind of your life um, as a whole as well and kind of um, people that have have shaped you um, and your life and kind of who you mm-hmm. are who would you say are the the, the top three influential people mm. that, that have kind of have shaped yeah have shaped you yeah I would say uh, first I gotta start, start with my mom hi mom uh, <laughs> she has been there she's been supporting me my whole life uh, and just is always been my number one fan. So thanks, mom. And um, moms out there, you d- you have no idea how important you are to your sons. Um, second, uh, my high school teacher, Lynn Stevenson. Uh, high school was a very tough time for me. And uh, Lynn, uh, Mrs. Stevenson, or Lynn now, uh, we're still good friends. I just chatted with her on the phone last week. Um, really pushed me and angled me and and opened up some new horizons for me. Things that I didn't realize that I would be capable of doing and ways of challenging myself intellectually. Uh, She really did open up for me and and she's remained a really good friend ever since. And then uh, the third person I would say, Professor John Poling at uh, Cal Poly State University where I went to undergrad. I actually started as a computer science major. And I never realized that that physics, that science, uh, the life of a researcher could be for me. I, I thought I wasn't smart enough or good enough. And I took an astronomy class from him and he pulled me aside. I said, look, if you're interested in this and I can tell you are and you're, you're good at it, you're better than you think you are, why don't you try physics as a major? And less than a week later, I switched majors and went on to get a PhD, have a research career, and now I'm, I'm telling everyone about all the amazing things that I've learned. So That's I'd have to say my mom, Lynn Stevenson, and Professor John Poling for really guiding uh, who I am today. That's brilliant. Well, I hope they all hear this as well from you. We'll, <laughs> we'll need to share this with them. <laughs> That's brilliant. And Last question, seeing as we are talking about space, uh, well, you will be talking about space, uh, should I say, in, in April. Um, and yeah, that is your expertise. Um, if we, right, say another hypothetical, if we were to jet you off into space and we mm-hmm. can tell you, Paul, you're only allowed to take one book 
and one mm. piece of music. So that can be a single, that can be a, an album, um, just something for you to listen to. What would that be? And why, actually, as well. You can give me a why, too. <laughs> you know what? I think if you told me I could go into space, but I could only bring one book or one pe- and or one piece of music, I think I would refuse because I just, I don't return to books often. I'll read them once, but then I want to read another book. I want to read another story. I want to learn something else. Or I listen to music. I'll listen to some songs or an album for a while, and then I'll want to move on to something else. That's just not the way my brain works. I don't come back to books or songs very often. So I would go crazy if I were limited to just one book or one album. And so I would have to turn down the opportunity to go to space if that was the requirement. I just can't do it. Brilliant. Well, that, yeah, that, that's a good answer. That's fair enough. I also, yes, I also don't usually reread things either uh, uh, for, for similar, very similar reasons to you. <laughs> I think there's so much out there as well to read as well. I wouldn't want to repeat the same one. Um, well, thank you so much for, for, for chatting to us today. It's really interesting to get to know a little bit more about you. Um, and we're very much excited to hear more from you on you, you know, your, your topic that you'll be talking about in, in April, which will be all around humans um, and kind of the future of humans in, in space um, and human colonization. Um, so obviously our viewers can hear from you uh, in April when they come and uh, join mm-hmm. the, and, and, and watch the program. Um, you also have a, a, a podcast called Ask a Space yeah. Me, which you where you kind of dig deep for kind of um, yeah, yeah. The, the, the curious and, and those who kind of want to, to learn more about space um, and you debunk lots of kind of the biggest kind of questions mm-hmm. and myths around space. Um, so that's on Spotify and, and other podcast providers. Um, and you also uh, released a book last year called How to Die in Space, which yes. uh, if people are interested to, to hear more about you. They should check that out too. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. This was so much fun to chat with you. And I really am looking forward uh, to presenting in April. Mm-hmm.